I'm Adam Moz, and this is Moz Models. Today, we're going to talk about outputs. Outputs behave a little bit differently than some people think, especially if you're coming from Spectrum, where there are a lot of ways to affect your output ranges that are complex in the way they interact, and none of them have a firm, impactful effect. They all intermix, with the exception of absolute travel, which is the only case where something does something that's absolute and doesn't depend on other settings for how they behave. With outputs on Ethos, they do their thing. And they don't interact directly. They affect how mixers work, but mixers don't affect how they work. And that's a key, key item. So to get to outputs, go to model, go to outputs, uh, this is an X18, so this is a small screen format, and let's just screw it. Go in here, so this, the small screen format is four mixers per page, or four channels per page. The large screen format is eight channels per page. You've got 64 channels of mixing total, and you have an output for each one. So, what have we got here? Key piece is you've got 64 channels of mixing. There's outputs for each one. Right now, the most you can send over RF, though, is 48 channels. Uh, that would be, the configuration I've got right now is how you get 48 channels. You've got 24 internal channels in Axis 2.4 or TD mode, and then you can have 24 external channels with a uh, Twin Light Pro in Twin or Axis mode. I do not recommend this setup. Um, the internal 2.4 and 2.4 FSK modules on in the Twin Light Pro module do not play well together. They're not synchronized, so you really shouldn't be using them at the same time. You can, I don't recommend it. But technically you can get 48 channels of RF. Uh, this is a, a little bit different. Uh, then OpenTX, where you can actually come up with a configuration where you've got more RF channels than you have mixing channels. OpenTX has 32 channels of mixing. But if you have an access radio and a, uh, an R9 module, you can actually get 40 channels of RF because you've got 24 channels of access internal and then on 2.4 gig. And then your R9 is 16 channels in ACCST or access modes. Uh, no, that is correct. It does max out at 16 channels for access mode on 900 meg. You have to go to tandem if you want more than 16 channels in 900 meg. But you can have 40 channels of RF, 32 channels of mixing. Obviously, eight channels are going to have to be common between the two systems. You cannot get every channel you have an RF with an independent input in OpenTX can in ethos because we do, while you increase the maximum potential channels by eight uh, on the RF side, you doubled the number of mixer channels. Now, the display here gives you two things, which is your mixer input and your channel output. And it's in percent. And then you've got the micro, up on the right here, you've got the microsecond value, PWM value. And by default, at 100 rates, your middle point is 1500 microseconds, your low is 988 microseconds, and your high is 2012 microseconds. So you've got a midpoint, and your swing in either direction is 512 microseconds. At max, that swing becomes 768 microseconds. So uh, we'll show that later. That's your 150% output rates. Now let's go in here and edit. First off, you can name it. You can name your output channels so you know what they're doing. Um, I don't like the aileron one, aileron two defaults. I always rename these left aileron and right aileron so I know which one I'm looking at. Uh, you've got the same channel output that we described. You've got invert, and that is your channel reversing. So you go invert. And you can see now the channel value is the opposite of the mixer value. This is something you'll have to go set um, often if you are dealing with a 
conversion from Spectrum or Futaba. Futaba usually it's the channel or the throttle channel you invert. Uh, Spectrum it's rudder and aileron if I remember correctly. Uh, don't quote me on that one. And you got your minimum, and we'll just show you what that does. I'm going to increase that. Uh, note that pop-up I got when I hit minus 125%. If you are using SBUS output, never, ever, ever use more than plus or minus 125% in your outputs. Because those are the limits of the SBUS protocol format. It's based on Futaba radio's limits. Minus 125% on FreeSky is equivalent to the maximum throw, or 125% in either direction, is equivalent to the maximum throw you can have in Futaba. Which, by the way, you'll notice if we go down, that's 860 microseconds. And if we go up, I'll just set that to 125%. It's 2140 microseconds, so you're 640 swing in either direction. Yeah, and it warned me at 125.1. And now we've got, it's 2268 actually. I'm not getting, I've got a little bit of calibration off. I'm not getting quite the full value. And 732 is the minimum. Like I said, I'm not getting quite the full value. Oh, there we do, if I really push it in. But those are your max endpoints. Key piece here. Notice how the mixer is still that 100%, and the channel value is going up to 150%. I'm going to go back, and we're going to go set that aileron mixer. And it, we're going to go set the weights, rates to 200%, which is the highest you can do this. And let's go back to outputs and ailerons. What you notice is when you get to 100%, it maxes out at 100%, and that channel doesn't go any further. Now you're saying, now you'll think, because I've got those maxed, that's got to be why it doesn't go further, right? With Spectrum, you'd be right. Because travel is not a hard limit on Spectrum. Well, let's go see, and let's set these back to 100%. And now, what do you see? When we get the mixer to 100%, it maxes out. Min and max in the outputs are hard limits. They are equivalent to the 100% mixer output or of the mixer stack, not of the individual mixer, but of the collective outputs of all the mixers assigned to that channel. So after the mixers sum up, the actual mixer channel output, 100% is the max value you'll ever send to an RF channel. But what that equates to in the aircraft depends on your min and max here. So if you're looking for more throw from the channel beyond your physical, beyond 100%, don't go cranking up your mixer to 125%. It's not gonna do any good for you. Set your min and your max to that 125%. That'll get you your throw. And then adjust your rates so your default rates are where you want them. These, the min and max are designed to protect your servos, you set them for the max physical throw of the servo. And then when you go and you program your mixers, you know 100% is all you, get, all you got. You may have mixing that wants you to go over 100% for one reason or another. It's going to clip. It's going to clip. It's going to clip. You want your aggregate output of all the channels put to, or all the mixers on that channel put together to hit 100% at your full throw because you're not going to ever get any more. That's a key piece. This 
does mess up a lot of people, particularly coming from Spectrum, where if you set your travel to 100%, then you set your, your rates to 125%, you'll get 125% at the servo. No, not in Ethos. You set your, uh, your servo to 100%, and that is what you get. There's a couple more settings here. And the next two, we're going to get into center sub trim. That adjusts your midpoint, your rest. You notice, I'll just dial in some, and you notice this went down to 1417. Uh, actually, let's just go back and reset our mixer so that. Oh, wait, not what I wanted. Yes. Boom. Set that back to 100% so we know we're getting what we expect when I demonstrate it. You'll notice that my endpoints are still 988 and 2012, but my midpoint's now 1417. That's just, I just picked that, 1420 for example. This sets the center sub trim, sets the midpoint of the stick, the zero position, zero percent position coming from the mixer without affecting the set endpoints. It's a key item. It does not affect the set endpoints at all. If you've set your endpoints physically and you need to change the midpoint, use center sub trim. PWM center. This does something very different. So if we change this, up to the point now, I'm just gonna put the current set, set up. So we set this to 1580, which moves our center point back to 1500, because we'd set it to 1420s in PWM center. So we moved it by 80. Our high mark is now 2092. And our low mark is now 1068. And you'll notice I'm still not quite getting in there because I gotta recalibrate my stick. PWM center shifts the range by the same amount. So it shifts each endpoint plus the center point by the same amount. You can get yourself in trouble if you start using really high max and mins here because you can, you still have that absolute limit of 2168 and 732 microseconds on either end. That's the max the protocol can send. So if you muck around too much with the PWM center and you're using really, really wide max and min, that can get you in trouble. Now, the next thing is you can assign a curve. And this is a really, really cool feature because this is how you do servo surface matching. You use a curve. Uh, typically what I'll do is I'll put a three point curve on one channel and that will, I usually put that on my left channel, the left channel, whatever surface, and that's where I, I'll set my minimum, my max to the physical limit. I'll adjust the two, uh, the three points, so I've got the, um, the surface doing what I want. And note, if you set your min and your max to 150%, and you go in and use the curve to balance all of it, uh, that can be really useful because then you set everything in the curve. You'll set each of your endpoints with the curve, and then your midpoint with the, with the three-point curve, and then you can go in the second curve, you can use a five-point or a seven-point curve, even a nine, uh, as many points as you want for how finely you want to balance it, and balance it at each position so that the, the two surfaces track identically. Uh, you can really lose yourself down a rabbit hole, but you can do um, with a curve, let's just, we'll go in ahead. It's a custom type. Okay, and by default it's five points, but you can use a 21 point curve. That is the max. And so you can very, very easily get to the point where you have absolutely perfect surface to surface tracking by using curves. And this, I'm not gonna get into this too much on this video beyond what I've already stated because that is a video in and of itself, and I think that might be too much video for a tech tip. That's one where I gotta get my Pike Perfect out and show you as I walk through a new setup on my Pike Perfects 
how I match the flaps and how I match the ailerons. The last two settings here are slow up and slow down. Don't use these for flaps. Please don't use these for flaps. In fact, don't use these unless you have something like gear where you have to send a sweep of values because you can't get around a slow up, slow down setting in your outputs. I almost want to, want to ask uh, the developers to remove this setting. It causes a lot of problems. Please don't use it unless you can't get that functionality any other way and you want that channel to always have slow up, slow down. Good th case where you're going to want to use this, you're doing some some automation in the aircraft, you've got a servo that's turning a turret in a warbird, say you're doing a B-25 and you've got the dorsal turret, you've just uh, mounted it to a, directly to a servo and you want it to sweep at a set rate, always. Like you've got a max rate. Uh, in real world, the turret only moves so fast and it's basically on off. Um, if the turret's moving, it's scanning at that rate. If it's not, it's not. Then you slow up, slow down. You can also use this, for example, I don't particularly like doing this, but gear door deployment, if you want a very set rate, can't hurt. But remember, you're not going to be able to quickly override it if you do your slow up and slow down in the output. I strongly recommend wherever possible, do it in the mixer. It is there. It does work. There's some weirdness occasionally. The other piece to remember here is if you have a mixer that's taking another mixer's channel as an input, it's never going to see any setting you put in outputs. Out the mixer input, channel input, if you say use channel 17 as a source, is from mixer output channel 17, not the RF output channel 17. So anything you set up here is invisible to the mixers. 100% invisible. That includes your reversing, your center point, your curve, your slow. It's invisible to the mixer. It's invisible to the rest of the radio. The only thing that sees it is the channel output displays and the RF module. So be careful with that. And that's really everything you've got here. So we'll uninvert. Set that to default. By the way, that's a nice thing. If you see the default, boom, you want to reset. There, you get it back. You set some sort of weird, let's say, yeah. We want to get weird endpoint. You want to reset because you just copied the model. You're setting up a new airplane. Default. Very, very useful. There you have it. That is outputs.